It was my sole aim as a child to acquire a dog. To this aim I set myself for several years of constant begging and pleading. Until one night they took me out of my bed to show me what they had brought home. My mother took the little dog out of her pocket. Tiny, brown and white, all tongue and rushing, panting and rushing. I was so happy. When I went back to bed, all I could hear was him starting to whine. First low and then becoming shrill. He put his nose to the small place where the corner of the door met the corner of the door frame. He put his nose tied up to it and snort in the air, sucking the smell of you to him, scratching, then snorting again. I couldn't sleep. I'd always cave in. I'd go back down to the kitchen and I'd play with him. That's how when it started to go bad. That's when I started to spoil him. I loved him too much. And then the worst was, he'd run away. The moment you opened the door, he'd run for his life. I felt so cheated. This thing that I'd wished for so long, at any chance, we were willing to risk everything to escape. And one day he did. One day he got out. I chased him through the hallway door. There wasn't even a moment's but on the shoes. Sock and tarmac. I ran after him like the wind. His four legs would carry him so fast. He went up the street to the crossroads. Oh God, if he got hit by the cars. Then he took a ride at the lane, down into the church car park, right where it hurt to run. Small squares of car window glass. Little stones that find the sensitive place on your foot. I'd almost catch him, and then he'd slip away. The moment I got closer, he'd speed up. Down by the church, stopping to take a pee, he looked behind, and he'd keep on running. I'd call his name, but he'd keep on running. Down by the front of the shop, he disappeared out of sight. I was desperate. I asked strangers if they'd seen him. The tears fell like rain. They tried to offer some words of encouragement. I was desperate. I told them, he thinks it's a game. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the white and brown again. I chased him once more time. He ran across the shop fronts, moving, maneuvering, over the shopping centre, through the car park, and down on towards the swimming pool. And we were getting further away from home, and the streets looked stranger, and the panic had turned to endurance. Up the street, down the street, up the street, down the street. I nearly caught him, but he slipped away. Oh, how did I let him slip away? Back down the street, back onto the main road, onto a small avenue. It had been over an hour. Then bam, I got him. Just as he tried to slip through the garden gates. I took him up off the ground, high in the air like a trophy. I clenched him tight. He was scratching me all over. He looked like he'd had the time of his life. He looked like he really lived. In the garden, all he ever did was run around in a sorry circle. Till he'd worn it down to the brown of the ground. Till he'd worn away the grass. I started to walk home with my imprisoned prize. And that's when I began to feel the weight of him. It took about five minutes to set in. But then I felt it. The solid weight of life. He was heavy. And the wriggling made it worse. I just wanted to get home. He'd no collar, so I couldn't drag him. I had to take him in my arms. Wicked, the weight of him. Pressing down on the bend of my arms. They began to tremble, to hurt, to burn. And we were still so far from getting back home. I wouldn't give up. I had to hold the love to me. I had to hold on to the love. I couldn't give up. I couldn't set him free. I couldn't even put him down on the ground. I was so exhausted and I could feel the cost of loving him. I could feel the cost of loving him in my aching arms. I reached home. It was already evening. I put him down on the carpet. I couldn't move my arms. They were actually swollen. And they hurt for days afterwards. You love someone. But two people can never love each other equally. So love is like slavery. 
Because one always has the power. Because they can run away. And the other is always powerless. Because they try and hold on to the person. They try to carry them. I couldn't carry you anymore. I wasn't strong enough. Later that dog became vicious. And he'd bite you till your hand ran red without a second thought. One day the council came to take him away. I was playing my PlayStation. I didn't even look out the window as he was being taken away. Before it had been pure, I loved the dog. But that had passed. It had all become messy. And I just wanted that he'd quickly be taken away.